walk out the back door, and there's 800 acres here that we use as a teaching lab. That makes it a rare place to teach and a rare place to be a student, in my opinion. And that's what you came here for, right? It's for hands-on, experiential-based training. So you got pit one, got the date, got your name. And then the next thing that comes up here is parent material. Now we've talked about that a lot. And you see you got three choices there, bedrock, alluvium, or colluvium. Colluvium, okay, yeah, colluvium. On these hill slope soils, the colluvium is the bedrock rubble that's being pulled down by gravity. And you can see the bedrock rubble right there in the base of the soil pit. So a little equipment, soil color book. And we need a folding rule and a little hydrochloric acid dilute so we can test the effervescence. And then the golf tees. You don't need the clubs, but you need the tees. The next thing is probably to go ahead and break out your soil horizons. And so we're gonna pin that with the golf tee at the approximate boundary. We'll put it right about there. And uh, yeah, I think today, I don't really see any reason to split that lower interval. Then the third horizon will start at the bottom of the second, down to 3.1. Do you figure that we got lucky enough that we stopped digging right at the bottom of the third horizon? And so how do you show that it's probably deeper? Put a plus mark at it. So the bottom is at 3.1 plus. We don't know exactly where. All right, very good. So, you know, obviously, uh, this is all science-based. We've studied soil science a lot. You can see that there is a certain art to this side of it as well. And, uh, you know, getting good at that art simply takes time. The more you do it, the better you get at it. But you have to start someplace. And the, the biggest challenge is to just go ahead and work through the process, make decisions as best you can as you go. And if you do that, several times, each time you'll get a little bit better at it and also you can kind of compare it to other people's descriptions and kind of slowly refine your skills. And the idea is to produce a description of the soil that when other people come out and look at the soil and look at your description, they can, even if they don't agree exactly with it, they can at least kind of understand why it is you describe the soil as it is, or as you did rather. That's pretty good. I'm pretty confident that that's the type of thing we're going to get. I think it's the way we're going to go here between an inch and two inches. So we're going to call this a silty clay loam. And it's like, well, these two soils, you know, the A horizon, the B horizon don't look the same, and yet we'll call them both silty clay loam. Well, their appearance is not their texture. That's a ped there, but again, it was really hard to kind of you know, when you're first looking at it in place here, it's hard to see those. The next part then there, and there's like three or four columns, is for, for redoxomorphic features. In this soil, the water does not stagnate for several months of year. It's fairly well drained, so there are no redoxomorphic features. If there's calcite in here, when you put dilute hydrochloric on it, that calcite will break down and make carbon dioxide gas, and the gas then will bubble off, and that's the effervescence. This didn't effervesce. If we were in Iowa looking at mollusols, we'd very likely find a BK horizon down there. We'd take it up, put acid on it, it would bubble profusely. If it's much effervescent, you'll see the little bubbles kind of form, and, but I'm, I'm just not seeing much happening there. The siltstone is this bedrock rubble that's being moved down slope, and, uh, and the soil then is forming from that bedrock rubble of siltstone as it breaks down. Rock fragments of different origins. Some is the weathered colluvial parent material. Some is bedrock rubble coming from above being added to the top of the soil. That's the sandstone. What are you going to classify this soil as? Excellent, inceptosol. That's how it's done. You describe the attributes of their horizon, and then based on the horizons that are present, you can assign its soil order.